What's up guys, welcome back to Boat Restoration by Ben. On today's video, I've got a customer's boat and he's got one of those Alpha Stern drives that one, refuses to go up and down. Two, it's a clunky stern drive. So you put it into gear and it goes clunk, 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 clunk. Finally, the prop starts to turn. Same thing with a reverse. Put the shifter in reverse, clunk, 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 pop. It goes into reverse and it's finally gotten so bad that it's only going in gear about 50% of the time. So it is time for him to get a new stern drive, place bellows, gimbal bearing, all the gaskets, as well as the water pump. So here we go. Quick video on this 2001 Monterey 190. It's a pretty standard runabout speedboat, and uh, this should be a good one to show you guys how to fix that clunky old stern drive that doesn't want to go up and down and it doesn't want to shift properly. All right, here we go. Well, first and foremost, if you're gonna remove an alpha stern drive, you need to put the shifter in the correct orientation. With a single shifter, that is in the reverse position. If you have a dual counter-rotating, the counter-rotating alpha will be in the forward position. But anyway, we got that one in the reverse position. Now we just need to hook up a battery real quick, and we'll see if we get that stern drive to drop, but I know it's been having a problem with its trim cylinders. Not a whole lot of action. I'm gonna have to put some weight on that thing. Yeah, those things go bad after a while. So what we'll probably do is put a new trim pump in it. Keep all the cables because it doesn't appear that they're leaking. Well, it appears the trim pump really doesn't want to work. So what we're gonna do is pop these little clips off the ends and tap this rod through. And that'll allow the drive to fall freely. And then we can stick our rams up out of the way and then we can pull our drive off. So it's not like our drive is seized up or anything for our power trim. It moves very easily, so do our rams. But you'll instantly notice this prop. It's in gear in reverse right now. But watch, I can skip, 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 bang. So that's what we're hearing when our shifting is not engaging properly. So we're gonna find out if it's actually a shift linkage issue or truly a stern drive issue. This is our shifter mechanism linkage throw here. And down here is our actual shifter cable. So I've removed the shifter cable. And I'm just checking its throw. So I can pull it out about an inch and I can push it in about an inch. You see that right there. Out, in. And I already checked when the actual shifter for the boat is actuating this whole thing. It's going as far in as it can and as far out as it can. So this thing is shifting within its throw. So reverse is pulled forward like that all the way. So now that that's all the way out, I'm gonna go down there, rotate the prop and see if for some reason it catches gear. If not, I know it's not in the shifting linkage throw. I know it's down in the drive. And also just as a bit of check, I'm gonna run that trim pump motor while this shifter doesn't have any load on it just to double check if it is a load issue or not a load issue. Head them back down, check our throw. Nope, still, yeah, if not, even worse. Skipped right out of gear. Not good. So it's definitely not the shifter linkage. It's in our stern drive or our shifter mechanism back here. Okay, six five eighths nuts. The drive with a little bit of popping. I normally put something in between the housing here and the um, turnbuckle for steering, and then just pop the drive down once and it slides right out. But here you go. So we got a pretty rusty input shaft and U joints. We have our shifter mechanism here, which was straight out. So that shifted no problem. And our physical shifter is down here. So what I'm gonna do guys, is I've got that fully 90 So that's forward, that's reverse, and I'm gonna spin my prop shaft. 
and it's still hitting out here real quick. Oh boy, we may have had bigger issues than I thought. Let's spin our prop shaft. Yep, pops right out of gear. It wants to spin, guys, but it's really stiff. Will it hold gear now? No, it will not hold gear. Pops right out. All right, we're gonna look into this one a little bit. Let's set this guy down for right now. Let's go look at one of the good stern drives. All right, here we have a good drive. This is a counter-rotating drive, but you see here, it spins over quite nicely. Let's see, this thing in gear, it is currently in reverse. I'm spinning the shaft, it's not skipping out, I'm not holding the coupler. If I kick it out into neutral, there's neutral, nothing. And then I kick it to forward, there's forward. So. That is how it should be, and then I try to go to reverse. It doesn't want to spin that way. It'll kick out, but if I keep spinning, let's see, boom, forward, there's forward. So this drive is a lot smoother and tighter. It's just wearing out in that other drive. So with our spare drive here, let's see. Right now, it's in neutral. This drive has no gears. So that's what's happening our other drive so as I'm spinning our input shaft I put it into forward there's forward but look I can spin it those gears are ground up down there I go to reverse spin it those gears are ground up down there so that's the direction that our our drive is heading in is those lower gears um, and our shifting lower unit are starting to go bad and have uh, taken some teeth off. So, so after consulting with the customer, we're going to go ahead and replace this lower drive outright. So I just bought a new one from SEI Products. That's a very nice uh, stern drive site. They are brand new stern drives um, using the original designs and all of that from the Mercruiser platform. So. I like SCI, I've used them on several boats, and the cost is much more beneficial, especially when working on older stuff like this. I will always go with SEI. So we're gonna put an SEI lower on this, we're gonna ditch this upper, use the good upper that I have, uh, mate those two together, and then we'll put it back on the boat. But while we're here, um, a couple crucial things to note. One, we got a cracked gimbal bellow cracked shifter hose bellow and a cracked exhaust bellow. We're gonna go ahead and replace all of those, including the gimbal bearing inside of the housing. So next, what we're gonna do is actually remove this trim and steering housing from the boat so we can more easily access our gimbal bearing and our bellows for replacement. All right, now for our next trick, what we're gonna do, is we're gonna start out by getting the spring out from inside of here, like so. This gives rigidity to the bellows and stops it from collapsing it on itself when you tilt up or down. It's also the most fun part of the operation to put back in. Remember, don't ever use a flathead screwdriver as a hammer or a chisel. It will void your warranty. There we go, there's the collar out. Now, should be able to just go and grab the bellows, tear the adhesive, and get it off. So now we just have to undo our shift linkage down here, the oil fill right here, the water hose right there, and this thing should come off. There we go, that's not gonna cause a massive oil leak under the boat. Classic. Now you can see the shift bellows the end of it right there had actually already torn off. So that should be connected over there. And you can see the exhaust bellows too had also torn in half. 
this was definitely time for a replacement. Right. Now for our next trick, we're gonna undo the exhaust bellows down here. Take this hose clamp off. I would show you better. There we go. There's the bellows off. Now, I'm gonna reach up into here and undo the water hose. That right there is the water passage. Look how full of gunk it is. That's not winning right there. Speaking of the shift cable, here it is. What we have to do is get in there and loosen that nut that lives all the way in the back there. But first, we have to take this linkage off. All right, so I cut the safety wire there. Now I'm gonna loosen this. You can see our ferrule right there. Now you can get a look at our gimbal bearing. That is locked up tight as a drum. That is not what we want to see. Well, that hose clamp has reduced itself to its basic elements. So I think I'm gonna to have to cut that guy out of there, but that's okay. And God, look at that gimbal bearing, not good. All right, I have tied off a messenger line to the inside of this. Do I remember if you can get the whole end out of here without taking it all off? No, and the answer is also no. The shifter, and I have to go and remove this end so we can pull it through the transom. Now apparently people don't like me using a croissant wrench, but uh, unfortunately, there's a lot of things in this world that just aren't necessarily what we want but it's what we get. And me dropping that down in the hole is one of them. I'm gonna mark with a Sharpie marker. If I had some electrical tape, I would probably use that where our shift ferrule is. Now, if we loosen this nut, this whole assembly here should, there we go, spin off. And now the cable should be able to pull through. All right, so for my next trick, I'm gonna try and finally get this nasty gimbal bearing out. Now, I don't have the correct puller right as of right now. It is in the mail. So, we're gonna use my favorite tool, the old slide hammer, or as my old boss used to call it, the slime hammer. Luckily, they use plenty of mercury extreme grease. Anyway, and with that, after a bit of cleaning that I won't subject you to, we should be ready for reassembly. Here is our new SEI lower. Now the big things to keep in mind when you're doing this, make sure that this O-ring is happily seated there. You can see that SEI was kind enough to go and put some uh, sticky stuff of some kind on it. Make sure to always put just a little bit of grease on your splines. Make sure not to forget this, we've all done it. Just remember, sometimes the Chinese parts are made to tolerance, so buy the US parts. 
always. That's the Sierra Bellows ring. So anyway, whatever this kit was, most of the parts worked fine, but we did find that that Bellows ring that holds it on was no bueno from just the generic transom seal kit. Nice. There you have it. We got a gear case that no longer slips. It's fully locked in. Nice new SEI lower unit. I'll go run the trim pump real quick. New bellows, new gimbal bearing, replaced all the seals, new drive fluid. New lower unit, everything is in good shape here with this stern drive. So there you have it. This 2001 Monterey 190 LS Montiva is back in action and working order. This owner has actually been trying to sell the boat. So it's actually currently for sale. It's got a nice 305 two barrel um, V8, Chevy V8 inside of it. Runs and drives great, fires right up. And now we just finished stern drive rebuild with a lower replacement, new gimbal bearing, new bellows, all new seals, new oils and a brand new trim pump. So this boat is ready to go. It is a 2001, so it's got dings and scrapes, but it is a one owner boat. So he's asking market value, which right now is $11,500 for the boat and trailer. Um, if you guys are interested, leave me a comment or shoot me an email, ben at boatrestorationbyben.com and I can get you in touch with this owner. He's asking 11.5, but he is accepting offers. So again, he just got done with probably about, you know, $2,500 to $3,000 worth of work to fix that stern drive, which I know he had taken off the boat price uh, to begin with. But now that that's complete and back ready to go, we're back at the market value price. So nice little boat. The upholstery is in decent shape, not perfect by any means. Overall, a nice older boat for somebody who is just getting into boating and looking for an open bow to cruise around. Another thing, this boat's only ever been used on a river, so it's never been beaten up. And this trailer that comes with it, it's got the folding neck, and again, has really only ever been a storage trailer. So right, wrong, and different, doesn't have too many miles on it. So anyway, thank you guys for watching as always. There's a quick video doing a little stern drive work. We are becoming an SEI dealer, so reach out if you guys have any stern drive work that you're looking to get done. Uh, and we'll catch you in the next video. Thank you for watching. See ya!